The Unshackled Waves, episode 200. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now if you're a close follower of The Unshackled, you'll have noticed we've been covering a lot of news about the Proud Boys. They have now been deplatformed off Facebook after being booted from Twitter a month ago, and Australia's left are attempting to have Gavin McGuinness banned from Australia for his upcoming tour. It would appear that the Proud Boys is the main group the left now have in their sites. The Proud Boys used Facebook for a lot of their online communication, so this is somewhat of a setback. To get some reaction, our guest today is US-based Proud Boy Yosef Ozia, who runs a YouTube channel where he promotes the Proud Boys and his politics. Yosef, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good, thanks. Now, the the mainstream media, well, especially our mainstream media here in Australia, uh, prefer to ignore uh, or dismiss or pretend that uh, Proud Boys such as you uh, don't exist. Now, you're not just... Uh, african-american but you're also uh jewish uh, can you begin by explaining why you decided to join the proud boys and why it's important to you well about two years ago which i am coming a bit of a boomer in a group because i've been in for so long um <laughs> gavin had a video where he like the proud boys are not racist we like jews and i've been following gavin for a little bit now gavin is very tongue-in-cheek so like well let me see if the Proud Boys are really racist. Let me go to one of the meetups. One thing Gavin always says, come to one of our meetups. Come hang out with the boys. Come drink with us and see if we're really these, these boogeyman in, a, in the corner that the media keep trying to make us out. And I went to one meetup and I came in to this, this, this organization with open arms. The first meetup, um, Proud Boys like, yeah, like, like this, yeah, I don't know, let's drink, let's talk, let's talk about politics, let us clash ideas, um, let, let's let's have a, really have a conversation. And for me, it was, it was, it was pretty darn amazing, because like, wow, Gavin is actually right when he said this. And then one thing I did when I first joined, is I kind of bounced around to different chapters, and it was the same way for each chap- chapter, where it's like, they opened me, they came, they let me enter with open arms, we was like, almost on the spot, it was kind of like, when you meet somebody you would, who know or into an inside joke, but you, you come to a room and everybody's into the joke. That's the, the problem. It's where like everybody know the inside joke and it, it makes it so much easier. So <clears throat> with me being a problem for the past two years, it's been a lot of lies. And that's the main reason why I became so vocal. Cause like, wait, I'm in this thing and I, I don't know what they, they're talking about. They, they're, they're, they're lying. Either they, there are, are ignorant or they're whiffling they're whiffling lying. They they know the truth, but they're lying because they try to push their narrative. That's the main reason why I push so hard. Like I, I've been in this for a while. Um, I'm fairly well known in the group. I'm fairly no, I feel like I'm loved in the group. I'm, I'm for sure well loved. Now I did win um, best black at Westfest. It was a tongue in cheek uh, it was a tongue in cheek award, but still <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's quite an interesting award to hand out. So you've never felt uh, uncomfortable in the Proud Boys or felt like you're in danger or that you're an outcast? No, no. And people, a lot of times on my YouTube channel, um, like, well, one day you're going to get drunk. And the Proud Boys, I, I live in the South, the Proud Boys are going to rope you by your, your ankles and drag you. And I tell people, I tell the story all the time because, like, it's, it's something where people need, 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 need to know this where I did one day get really drunk at a, at a pro boy meetup, which we're really good at doing that. And mm, the pro yeah, boys, had. yeah. Then the pro boys, they got in their trucks. The pro boys in my traffic got in their trucks and they locked me in my space. So I don't go out and drink. I don't drive drunk. And um, they took my keys, put me back in my car. And every 32 hour, they went to my car and checked up on me and see what I'm all right. So like, and these are still you no, know, your average redneck that people are so afraid of. Like, yeah, these guys take care of me. Uh, the guys, when I got fired and blacklisted from my industry, my industry, I was a vegan chef at one point. 
uh, the prior ways gave a lot of the prior ways gave me money, so I can uh, pay my, really bring myself back up to my feet. If I if it if I wasn't in the prior ways and had a fire, I would have lost my car. Now I currently have two cars, but my first car I would have lost that, uh, and that would have ruined my credit. So like, no, I have never felt uncomfortable with the prior ways. I have met hundreds of prior ways at this point. So I have met Gavin. I have met Chadwick Milo. A lot of the big big wigs for the prior ways. And I have never felt uncomfortable, not at all. Now, there was a, a Daily Beast article uh, last month which attempted to psychoanalyze people such as yourself asking uh, why are, are young men of color joining white supremacist groups? And uh, they, they quoted some expert who said that you're being used to excuse uh, white racism and uh, to, to make white supremacy a more a durable force. Did you see that article? And what, what do you yeah. make of such analysis? It's, it's full of crap. Is is nothing but full of crap because you have to almost you almost have to be a level of Russian doing steroids back in the nineteen seventy Olympics version of gymnastics to get to this point. This is how far you have to reach. You basically have to dislocate your arm to reach this far. Because um, a I had a following before I joined the Proud Boys. I had my YouTube channel before I joined the Proud Boys. And then I joined the Proud Boys. Like oh these guys. A lot of things they're saying, I agree with. And they are also really great drinking buddies. Like, you don't just give up on your drinking buddy when you got hundreds of thousands of drinking buddies. You just don't do that. Um, because at the end of the day, we're not a white supremacist group. Gavin is a race mixer. Like, he's a, he's a, a no, the alt right say he's a dirty, dirty rich race mix, mixer. Joe Biggs is up there. He's a, another dirty race mixer. Joe Biggs is up there. He's another dirty race mixer. Chadwick Moore, Milo Yiannopoulos, these all guys are not in no a white relationship. They all are, are dirty race mixers. Um, so it's like, no, this it makes no sense. Gavin had never say, let's push for no no white people and make sure white people get ahead. Because I'm I'm fairly sure that all these people I just named all hate white liberals. Um, they care about ideas. What are, the, are your ideas? Do you care that no Western values? Because there there are such things are Western values. Do you care about America? Do you care about being an entrepreneur? Do you care about improving yourself? These are things that we care about. We don't care about your race. We say that all the time. We do not honestly give two crap about your race. Um, it's just one of those silly things where they're reaching and they don't understand the Proud Boys. And it's not like you can't reach one of us. You can easily ask any Proud Boys, like Paul or me or Robert, and ask them, hey, what you guys doing? They're like, we're over here drinking. I, I, don't, I don't really believe they just drinking and talking politics that seems i don't know it seems weird that guys are just going out drinking and having fun it's weird to them because the left don't have fun yeah they, if the left they'd be surprised if they actually went to proud boys meeting they'd probably be too scared in their mind to just see that it's just a whole bunch of guys just hanging out and having a good time yeah it's, it's it was just the last portland event i wasn't there um, Atifa came to our side and he was like, he was physically shaking, a little soy boy. Just, <sighs> and um, and the, like, we're like, hey, calm down, dude. We're not going to help you out. And he's like, well, I'm just worried because they heard you guys are violent. And a couple of proud boys and a couple of people from the Patriot Prayers, they gave him money. Like, hey, here goes some cash. You no, know, get it yourself on your on your feet. And they and like, well, yeah, no, they was wrong about you guys. Like, well, of course they're wrong about us because they don't talk to us. They just throw piss and, and fireworks at us. Now, you're not just a Proud Boys member, you're also a public figure. You have a, a YouTube channel where you not just talk about the, the Proud Boys, but your own uh, political journey. What would you say is the main thing you want to communicate through your channel? One thing, I started my channel because in a lot of my early videos was just criticizing the media. And I, when John Trump got elected, don't get me wrong, I, I went for him at the last second. Um, when he got elected, everything, I started questioning news media. Like, everything I've been told is a lie. So I got to figure out where that lie is, is happening. And, um, and the, the, the honest to God the truth is the media is, is manipulating um, the people, it's manipulating the, the views, they're manipulating the agenda. So I started, like, I'm going to start punching back against the media. I'm, I'm going to stick to the facts for the most part. And I'm going to, I didn't even tell my opinion, 
but I'll make sure that you get as much context as possible before I do anything. I'm gonna wait until all the information come out. Um, and that's just one thing I, I try my best to do is like, this is, this is the truth. This is the whole truth. This is my perspective. This is what's perspective of other people. And this is, is what you can go from there. Uh, the videos, a lot of my videos that have become really uh, well watched are the videos that are extremely, from my, I feel like, extremely well researched. It took me a long time to make. Like, it took me days to research. Yeah, making YouTube videos, they, they, uh, a lot of the short ones, I mean, they, yeah, they only go for five minutes, but they take hours and hours of preparation to, to put together. Yeah, I have one right now where I'm going to do a video call, um, Do You Mind? Because I'm on Minds now. So like I'm, I'm trying to start a movement where we get people onto Minds and start building out that platform. No, right. Like, it is time for us to leave Facebook. I, my first account got suspended off Facebook. And I haven't posted in 20 days because I was, I, was, I, was, well, I was suspended for 30 days currently. Then I got permanently banned off Facebook. So that's, like, it's time for the right to go to Minds because the left is not there. It's time for the, the right to get off Twitter because the left is there. And there are a bunch of hypocrites. They're not going to let us win. Um, they're not going to let us recruit people. They're not going to let us um, do our, our thing. They're not going to let us joke around. Um, and they're going to take everything out of context. So the best thing we do is is starve them. Instead of having us, um, let us have a presence online and let them pick at us, let's just take our stuff, our, our wits, our, 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 our fun somewhere else. Because the left, they're, they can't have fun. Their fun is messing with us. Our fun is just being us. Well, that's the reason I've got you on today is to, to talk about the, the Proud Boys uh, being kicked off uh, Facebook. All the, the pages worldwide were deleted and all the, the admins and elders were all uh, kicked off. And, and this uh, followed the, the Proud Boys being kicked off uh, Twitter back in uh, August. And uh, you've just spoken a bit about their, uh, what, what it was like being deplatformed and that. But yeah, it would have been quite, quite, a, quite a shock. And everyone always says that Facebook's a private company. They can, uh, they, they have the right to decide who's on their platform. But when it's the major communication tool in the world when it's just the rugs pulled out from you like that it's just wow where do you go from there this like twitter and facebook was such full of crap and it was it was done by political activists who are are shitty at writing articles and it's, it's mostly females who doesn't have no kids or does, <laughs> and they have cats and it doesn't have a husband and they just hate life because their dad didn't love them enough. And some guy, you know, you know banged him in the back of the car 20 years ago, and they can't get rid of that. So with with us getting rid of Twitter, and this is like, this is not me just being sexist. Don't get me wrong. I might be slightly sexist, um, according to the left. Is This is what I have experienced from all these these journalists and a lot of these activists of me doing interview after interview. Like It seems like this is just a lot of, of feminists who who have a bunch of cats, who just hate men. <laughs> so we got kicked off Twitter because they like, well, you're going to kick them off Twitter because they unite the right. Now, with that unite the right, the first unite the right, we disavowed it. Gavin was going to go. He didn't go. Um, and the problem is who was there. The, they all got you know, kicked out of the group for the most part. Uh, it, it was maybe like one or two who was there and they like they saw what happened and they immediately left. Like, yeah, this is full of crap. And so they kicked us off because of the United the Right 2 was coming up. What was and that was the, the reason. Now, the funny thing, Richard Spencer, I believe, is still on Twitter. But he was still on Twitter at the time. Um, J uh, Jason Kessler, the actual organizer, he still he was still on Twitter at the time. You no, know, the, the a lot of these high profile um, people, you no know, commentators, they also on Twitter. They banned us because at the end of the day, we're more organized than a lot of these other groups. Well, way more organized. And with Facebook, with this, I did a whole video and I was very angry. Where it's like, well, you guys, uh, you guys beat up the anti-fascists, and like, well. It's, it's CNN. CNN, they just clip it one time with this, this. I'm pretty sure you remember this. And it, it, I was ticked off. And I remember these things. 
Whereas, no, this this young black girl was angry, like, don't tear up your na- our neighborhood. We need our neighborhood. And then a second after that, she said, go tear up white people's neighborhood. And CNN clipped that out. And like, oh, wow. Wow. That's, she, she's calling for stability. This is absolutely amazing. Like, like, but you guys clipped out the z- exact second of her saying, go beat up white people. Like, you guys are full of crap. So with them, like, you guys see that Atifa came to our, beforehand, they came to our event. And they bragged about this on Twitter and Facebook. They vandalized the building. Um, afterwards, next day, they waited for Gavin at his event. They beat up one guy, first off. It was 100 Atifa out there. Um, police had to escort every single person. And then when the probe was finally allowed to leave, then they were throwing pee in bodily fluids at us. And that's when we started beating them up. And like, and you can't really complain. Like, and a lot of people say, well, you guys went too far. Well, A, we was outnumbered. And these guys came to us for a fight. And you, that's, we wouldn't go to a, a Tifa event just to pick a fight. We wouldn't do that. But Tifa goes to all our events, all our rallies, all our talks to have a fight and shut us down. And they have consistently did this. And this is the funny thing. After they called the hate group, the very next day at the same Republican um, club, Azifa went back to this place and beat up a Jewish reporter so bloody he had to go to the hospital. And that didn't make any news. Yeah, and a few, uh, three of the the Antifa they were they were charged for for that assault that you're referring to, and yeah, the the Proud Boys they only respond or are only violent in response to to Antifa uh, aggression, and uh, this uh, the New York uh, Metropolitan Club confrontation that you're just referring to. It's not the first uh, confrontation that Proud Boys have had with Antifa, but uh, it certainly, in the eyes of the media, was a accumulation of uh, events where they thought they could uh, put forward this narrative that that you were a violent uh, group. Uh, but probably what uh, also propelled their 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 narrative was the fact that during uh, Gavin McGuinness' address to the Republican Club was the the reenactment of the assassination of Japanese socialist Ingiro uh, Asanami by nationalist. Uh, Ota Yamaguchi, and uh, afterwards, uh, Gavin drew his plastic sword uh, ag- uh, against uh, Antifa, who were trying to throw uh, a piss at him, and said, uh, "All hail Ota Yamaguchi." Now, uh, looking back on on that, the the reenactment of that assassination was seen to to be glorifying it. Uh, were, was that a mistake? Was that bad bad optics? Well, it was like this. Remember, it's like when Trump first got in office, they did a reenactment of assassinating Trump, and it was like, well, it's just, it's just acting. Um, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that we do. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, See, so I think stop getting so triggered of, of us reenacting killing, you no, know, the president over and over again. So, like, the person we re- reenact is not dead. I mean, he's, he's dead. He's dead a long time ago. The person that killed the person um, might have saved that country. Like, so, like seriously. Um, it was a private event. The left do some re- really weird things at their private events. And we did this, this one skit. Now, it could have been, have been bad optics. It was like, at the end of the day, I don't care about your, op- your, your optics left. Because I don't, I do not, <laughs> I'm trying to use the right word. I don't social, yeah, I don't. These people are terrorists. It's like, I, 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 I'm not going to be on your terms. This is your terms, where you can reenact to kill Donald Trump, but we can't do the same thing. We're not even killing Donald Trump. We're killing somebody that's already dead and somebody who probably saved this country. Um, and even with Gavin, it's a plastic sword. I have a real sword in my house. No, most probably have real swords in the house. It, w- it wasn't like he was out there, you know, slicing the a head off. He had a plastic sword and he waved it at the person and then hopped in his car. And once again, it was a private event. So what? Who cares? It was a private event. If you show up at a private event and you start, I don't like what they're doing inside of that private event. You just, you just a butt. You're, you're a butt, and you're, you. I don't care. 
Did you have a feeling that this uh, deplatforming uh, was coming because this uh, New York uh, incident at snowballed and then Democrat politicians, they were the ones who initiated the, the NYPD uh, investigation. Then you had this uh, satirist, uh, Vic Berger, who uh, put together a video montage of uh, Gavin uh, calling the Proud Boys uh, a gang and how he was calling for, for violence and saying we're, we're coming to, to, to beat you up and the entire mainstream media, even Fox News, the, the supposed right wing one, was uh, taking uh, sh uh, shots at you. So were you all uh, aware that this avalanche was occurring? No. It is, and this is, I'm not trying to be like all Alex Jones likes, but I think the reason why the left is using the Proud Boys, and I, I am told left, it's like, as you guys have no platform, and how you guys get a vote is you rally up your base with hatred and animosity. Like, that's how you get the votes out. You just can't argue the points, and you're like, oh, wow, those are, those are really good points. Because the, their policies, they can't explain that. These are, they can't explain it. So you have to no Bernie Sanders, no fight for fifteen. So Bernie, like, when well, you fight for fifteen, you're gonna lose jobs, and then the person who's that company, they're gonna raise the prices. What you gonna do for that? Are you gonna are you gonna price price gate? Um, are you gonna um, make sure the prices don't change and make sure that business go under? So like they they have to move fast and use emotions for you no know, universal healthcare. Like there, there are problems with universal healthcare uh, for you know really any policies you think of right now. They really can't explain it. Um, so they, they have to use fear. So this was a gift from the left. We're like, and there's such liars. We're like, well, the Proud Boys is this violent white supremacist group. And then the picture they use is like a bunch of like Proud Boys of colors. Like even when they were like, yeah, you know, these, these are a white nationalists. And Carl Tucker claimed that he doesn't know the Proud Boys. And then it's Carl Tucker, you know, shaking the hand of a black Proud Boys. And then on the CNN panel, was like, uh, well, yeah, well, some Proud Boys are Proud Boys of Color is kind of weird. And I was like, you guys are such full of crap. And that's how you're trying to rally your base up is to claim that we are this hate group. But at the end of the day, Tifa has done way more stuff than us. Even like in, down here in Georgia, we don't do anything. And the Tifa down here get arrested all the time from the police for causing violence. So we don't have to even show up for them to stuff get violent. Can you address the, the the video that I talked about the the Vic Berger one where it's where it it looks quite quite bad all these uh, clips of Gavin put together uh, calling for violence say he wants violence in in the streets uh, uh, what's yeah. the the context of, the, of that it, it was once again Tifa attacking the Proud Boys and then you no know, Gavin was like why can't why can't we do that why can't we get violence and and Vic Berger he's a, such a he's a I wouldn't trust Vic Berger. He, he's a far leftist who had a, a, a super hatred with the, with the right. Well, he recently just got in trouble for first creating a fake profile of a cop and using that profile to bash the right. Like, I'm a cop and you guys are evil. I'm a cop for 36 years and you guys are, 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 are fascists. You know, things of that nature. Um, Vic Berger, he have a, a burning hatred for Gavin. So he actually went through I think hundreds, I think almost maybe thousands of videos and try to get all the worst parts of Gavin and take them completely out of context, like of him just saying this word. Because um, recently the same thing happened to me where someone took a video, one of my videos out of context of me trying to bring people from the alt-right to the center and like, oh, look at this guy, he's advocating for the alt-right. Like, you guys, that was that was a 20-minute video and it took one minute out. Out of context, completely out of context. So it's it like, they want us off the platform, but what's the, what are they going to do when we're off the platform? This is when all the bad guys are gone. They're going to eat themselves like the left always do. Yeah, oh, well, that's their problem. The, when the left eat themselves, I just sit back and say, ha, huh, you're getting your up, up and comments now. I don't know. It's like this why the, the problem is so effective versus Atifa. Um, like this, Atifa, they don't base their system of meritocracy. I'm butchering this word. They butcher our victimhood. So the, the biggest victim is going to be the one up top. So if you're a, a 
black, half black, half Latino cripple who's transgender and Muslim, you know, you're the most effective. And they tend, those kind of people tend to be, have some mental issues. And that's why most left wing organizations, they tend to fall apart or they tend to go to crap or they, they just can't properly organize properly. They just luckily they have the media to kind of to clean up their, their image a little bit, make sure they get the good parts. Now with the Proud Boys, we have chapter leaders, we have sergeant and armors, we have you no, know, we have people who are elders. So we are a lot more organized. And then we're not one giant group. Each state has their own chapter. Or some states have multiple chapters. Where they, if you have a chapter leader, you have your sergeant in arms, you have your proverbs, you have your elders, you have the proverbs that have been for a long for a while. So it's very, very organized. Um, it's a system based off who's the best, who's the most responsible. Now, the Proud Boys are now off Twitter and Facebook, the, the major uh, communication tools. You mentioned that you've gone on to Minds.com, which is a social media free speech uh, alternative. But how have the, the Proud Boys been reacting and regrouping to, to this deplatforming? Like, we're, we are pretty much going to Minds. Um, some people say Gab. Um, I, I, I'm trying to stick, stick to well, Minds. Gab's down at the moment. Yeah. So I'm trying to tell Proud Boys, just go to Minds. Um, I think we're getting a deep platform off Instagram. Um, we're getting booted off Facebook. Um, every every other day is Proud Boys just getting removed. Um, they're really looking to get rid of us. So like, you can get rid of us. We just go to Minds. And Minds is not too bad. Because I'm, I'm a video creator. So I do post a lot of pictures and a lot of memes. I, I should post a little bit. And um. Yeah, I do have my commentate, like a thing that I say. It's like, I, it's, it's, it's kind of like the combination of Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. It's like, I'm just going to stick over here. I, I can be real lazy and just post videos here. I can be lazy and post no pictures here. and be lazy and post everything here. Um, and I don't have the fear of being banned or suspended off Facebook again. And also, I know the left is not here. That's the fun part. Just, I know the left is not here. Where you can actually have free speech and you can actually have conversations. Uh, and it is is really I have no problem with Facebook. Because Facebook at the end of the day, there is a far leftist organization. They're selling your data to the highest bidder, and they they're just a crappy crappy website. Even though I'm on Minds now, I still I, I'm still in the Facebook mindset where I still I still I still fear that you know the Zucks gonna come for me. Well, I don't. Uh, it's and mostly because. For me, I have a lot of hate followers. A lot of people, lot of people do, do not like me, and I knew I knew that a lot of them were on my Facebook, and they they will report my my stuff. They were report my videos, report my pictures. I had one friend who told me that the only reason reason why she was still on my Facebook is so she can report report every single one of my, one of my um, posts. I'm like you're not a friend, you just some crybaby, you some just hurt crybaby. Oh that yeah, that that is lost. Yeah, it's like, you have nothing better to do than to mess with me. You have no life. You claim you have life because you do yoga and you're a feminist, but you have no life. There's nothing, there's nothing we want, like, there's nothing fulfilled for of being a feminist. There's always something, it's something to complain about. There's nothing to be accomplished about to be, be a feminist. To be a leftist, you have to always be a victim and you have always in your mindset say, I'm just not good enough. With the right is, what can the next thing can I do to improve myself, improve my community, my community, uh, improve my business? And when you get into that mindset, is you can feel prideful for the things that you do. But if you're a leftist, you can never feel proud. You only can feel get because you're doing better than the next person. I feel prideful for you no know, how I live, my cars, my I have my studio, a lot of equipment here. I have two cameras up right in here. I have a a shop upstairs that I built myself. I'm pretty proud for that. Like, why should not feel pride? Why should not feel happy? And that's right now is the problem with the left. Is just they are just they're miserable people, and they want us to be miserable. They see a bunch of guys having fun, and they have a problem with that. 
Oh yeah, we have plenty of miserable trolls on on our comments, and yeah, it's just amazing the the lengths that they go to. Now, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, Gavin uh, McGuinness is is touring Australia. It was meant to be this month, but it's now in December as part of the Deplorables uh, tour. And uh, the the local left and Antifa groups in Australia ha are trying to get him uh, banned from Australia. The Change.org petition they they launched now as uh, 50,000 uh, signatures and now our Labor Opposition Party, their uh, immigration spokesperson has written to our Home Affairs Minister saying that Gavin uh, should be denied a, a visa. And I mentioned before about the, the Democrat uh, politicians in New York uh, instigating this NYB PD investigation and charges against the uh, the Proud Boys involved with the, the scuffle with Antifa. Is government persecution now possible next step in the, the campaign against the Proud Boys? Yeah. They, they're trying the best to get rid of us. Um, they're not going to. But even with a... This is, this is my, my whole statement. I mean, this is what agitated me about the left. You don't have to watch our stuff. You don't have to follow us. You don't have to go to our events. You don't have to do that. This is there is this, this show on Netflix called Big Mouth, where every other video, I mean every other episode is just degeneracy. Like they had one video where it's saying you should feel proud of your body, and they all got naked in this video. And this is these are little girls. Like who are you showing this to? They had one video where say it's, it's okay to experiment with. It's okay to be fat. It's okay. Is it's all these horrible things where it's like. Well, I'm just not going to watch that. I'm just I'm not going to. I'm going to vote with my dollars. Dollars. So, like, you don't have to watch Gavin McKenna's event. You don't have to do that. You don't have to show to his events. You don't have to show to Milo events. Even with the, the first battle, you know, when they burnt down Berkeley, he was at a, a show of, like, maybe 100 people. And they burnt down this event and made his voice much larger. It's like, you can keep banning Gavin, but just don't give him a bigger voice. Kind of like Alex Jones. Like, yeah, they got rid of Alex Jones, but when Alex Jones comes in public, now he's this huge figure. He's a, he's much bigger, believe it or not, than he was before. He's much more famous now than he was beforehand. Oh, yeah. G uh, Gavin, or already he was a, a household name uh, in the in international scene. I mean, he's a, sel a self-made man. It's, it's funny that they're, they're going after him, given that, well, he is a, a businessman. He's got no, no criminal record, and they're uh, betraying him as this uh, thug, uh, dangerous person who's going to cause riots when he's in Australia. Gavin is this, this he's mid-aged guy mid-weight. He's basically a slightly taller version of Grover. That's that's Gavin. So, I was like, what are you fearful of? And if Gavin has such bad ideas, why don't you challenge his ideas? Why don't you do that? They don't do that. And Speech people, is violence. Apparently it is. Because I, 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 I hear people like, yeah, no, I know, I disagree with Gavin points, but um, I support his 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 right to talk. Like, what are the ideas that you are so against? Like, tell me what are you against the ideas? Because everything, everything Gavin says out of his mouth is pretty much true. Like, he, he, he fact checks. Gavin's a pretty smart dude. And has has this recent spate of events, has it taken a toll on individual members of the Proud Boys and some of the, the group morale? Because no one likes being being accused of being part of a violent hate group. Um, yeah, it sucks. A lot of Proud Boys had you no know, memories on their Facebook, um, dead relatives and things of that nature. And it sucked because we are being banned off of a line. Uh, we didn't start the fight. They, they came to this event a day prior to and vandalize the building. They came the next day, they came to an event and they was beating up people again. They, and then after they were beating up right wingers, they was throwing things at us, and then we got in a fight. That's the that's the truth. That's it. And right now, the left is using this to get rid of us because they have a problem with with guys getting together, where the, you have to call a multiracial white supremacist group because if we are what we say we are, 
then what is the problem with that? Why can't we be a multiracial, no frat, no man fraternity club that drinks, talk politics? Why, why is that not okay? It's kind of like, um, it's okay to be white, you no know, thing that was going on for a little bit. And people are like, it's not okay to be white. We're like, well, why is it not okay to be white? It seems like you just hate white people. It's not like, so when we say, we're just going over here and have fun and drink, talk politics, like, well, you guys, it's not okay for you guys to do that. Well, why is, is it not okay for us to have fun? Why is it not okay for brothers of you no know, black, Latino, Asian, and uh, uh, to come in white, come together and talk politics? Why it's because it's okay? white, white supremacists uh, do that as well. If they do do something and it's the same thing that you do, then uh, you must be linked with them. That's their logic. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, I think they, they just, they hate fun. Um, they don't, they don't like fun. And they have to stick that label to us. It's like, well, it's kind of like this, this fallacy. Like, a Hitler was a vegan. Now all vegans are a Hitler. But mm -hmm. if the vegan community disavowed the Hitler, it's like, well, that's a hell of a stretch you got going right there. Like, well, it is a hell of a stretch. He drank water as well. Uh, you drank I, water. I I also heard that no, he was pro abortion. I guess we got to get rid of abortions now. Uh, would you say that um, even desp uh, despite all that's happened, that uh, Proud Boys they still have no regrets? There's going to be no apologies, no no reform, no attempt to uh, rehabilitate uh, this so-called perception. No, because you know why? This is uh, them banning us off the platform tells one thing. They are afraid of us because we're winning. We're going to continue winning. It's a huge red wave coming to America. They have no idea how to deal deal with this. They they're trying to strike fear in the heart of America to get this blue wave back up and running, but it's not going to happen. Tomorrow I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote down ticket. I'm going to vote red. There's nothing you do to stop me. And every single Republican that I personally know have already voted. They're going out there and they're voting. Every single Republican that I know online, they have already voted. And they're telling their fans to go out and vote. And this is the step to vote. So, like, if you're so fearful of this red wave, maybe there's something that's, that's you're doing wrong to causing this. Maybe your ideas are not the best, Buster Brown. Maybe that. And maybe they can learn from their mistakes. How did you how do you lose the white working class Democrats? How you start you no know, appeasing to the minority, you start bashing the majority, you start saying, We don't need you guys, we don't care about you guys. No, you have to care about these guys because they are American, they're your brothers. It's, that's that's all. So uh, I, I noticed this this one quote is when you cut out the man, when you cut out a, a man's tongues, you don't silence him, you make his voice larger. So yeah, you silenced me, but guess what? No, my my video went on a drudge report. My video was, was getting retweeted and it blew up afterwards. That's your fault. And guess what? I'm gonna continue doing this. And guess what? Now I'm gonna bitch you and I'm on Mimes and those are pretty good platform and my videos are doing well over there. And I'm gonna keep doing this. And like, I'm, not, I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna double down. And I think every Broadway is, is going to double down. You know why? You cause this monster. You, you can try to silence us but it's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that mines and 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 what's that? Uh, hang on, I'll start there. I definitely think now that mines and GitTube, they will definitely begin to take off now. If you if you start to uh, no platform too many people off the the big tech social media platforms, then yeah, it's it's only natural that uh, people go to alternatives. And as you're mentioning, the the midterms are going to be uh, interesting to watch. Uh, well, it's been good to chat with you today, Yusuf, and learn about your journey with Proud Boys, and also discuss the the, the recent developments i uh, will definitely uh, keep in touch and uh we'll see just yeah what what sort of comes next all right i appreciate you, you know let me on your program and um and to tell everybody we're not stopping we're not losing you know how we're not losing we know we're not losing they're doing everything in their power to try to silence us so we, we're saying what is true but they don't like it so therefore keep going at it keep fighting and don't show them that you're hurt.
this this you gotta take the lumps and keep on moving and this is the movement where we're winning because we are at the heart is what we're trying to do for the best for the people to make sure we have the maximal amount of freedom because if you truly want to be you no know, human you, you have to have the max amount of freedom and this is what this side is we are maximum freedom and we're maximum fun and this is this side and on that side is censorship and, and, and virtue signaling and that's all i have to say on that well, it's certainly a refreshing message appreciate that all right everybody that's the show for today as i mentioned during the show gavin mcginnis australian tour which we've been promoting has been moved to december now and will include anti-islam activist and british values campaigner toby robinson which is billed as the deplorables tour tickets for gavin's tour have been converted to deplorables tickets visiting the same cities we are hoping that both can make it into the country uh, refunds will be given if they can't but you should still uh, grab your tickets by if you haven't already done so already by going to the new tour website thedeplorables.com.au the victorian state election is being held on saturday the 24th of november so join us for another election night live stream which will be starting at 6 p.m australian eastern daylight savings time when the polls close join me on facebook and youtube live along with my panel which will be the young conservative david hiscock from xyz and mangus o'mallon it is shaping up to be a closely fought election with the campaign in full swing so it'll certainly be an interesting result to watch on the night if you want to take a stand against Antifa violence, uh, there is another free speech relay happening in Melbourne, hosted by the Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, which is on Saturday the 1st of December at 12pm, which will be in the Melbourne CBD. Also, as always, we cannot do this without your support, and the best way that you can support us is by becoming a patron on Patreon at patreon.com slash the unshackled. Or the other way to do so is sending us a direct contribution via our PayPal link, which is paypal.me slash the unshackled, which many of you have been doing, which we are all very grateful for. So thanks once again for your company, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.